The James Bond film franchise is the longest running in cinematic history, with its use of spectacular real life stunts as a major reason for Bond's success. Whilst many are rightfully in awe of the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible films and their hyper realistic dangerous stunts, in fact it's the Bond films that have been doing this for years, except for Pierce Brosnan's Die Another Day of course. CGI has largely been left alone, lending a certain authenticity to the action sequences, like no other film franchise, but with real life stunts come real life risks. I'm Roy, Ben Roy from WhatCulture.com and this is 10 stunts that went wrong in James Bond films. Number 10. Daniel Craig gets injured in every film. It's hard to believe that many fans and critics initially didn't think that Craig could handle being Bond, because apparently he was too soft of all things. This belief was mainly because he wore safety vests for stunts in his first film, the now critically acclaimed Casino Royale, and well the fact he was blonde. Thankfully though, these naysayers were well off task. He's actually criticised for having a more dark, broodier Bond. That's now criticised for not having any humour. The image of Craig being a tough nut is actually backed up by his performances in Bond, and the amount of punishment he's put himself through to date. Craig lost teeth in the fight scene during Casino Royale. Not to be outdone, the blonde Bond then sliced the top of his finger off during the film in a quantum of solace. While Craig saved himself any pain during the film in a skyfall, he was back to taking bumps in Spectre, injuring his shoulder during a fight scene at Pywin Studios, which of course delayed the shoot. During his final effort as Bond in the production of No Time to Die, Craig managed to get injured once more, while running about shooting a scene in Jamaica again delaying another movie. No wonder the actor said he'd rather slit his wrists than play Bond again. Number 9. Skiing off the mountain face, the spy who loved me. By far one of the most memorable and spectacular stunts in a James Bond film took place in the 1977 Bond film. The setting is the edge of a cliff top, which Bond casually skis off while being pursued by a skiing gunman. As he plummets to the earth, 007 activates a parachute, which reveals a Union Jack, as 007 calmly guides himself to ground level. The action sequence is breathtaking and provided Roger Moore his greatest starring role as Bond. It also left many fans' jaws rightly dropped, but the stunt nearly turned into a complete disaster, as the organisers of the stunt didn't take into account the important factor of gravity. As documented in the Bond's 40th anniversary documentary, stuntman Rick Sylvester expertly planned a stunt that he had never tried before, personally choosing the location for the stunt in Austria. After skiing off the mountain face, a mechanism was designed for the skis to become unattached, before Sylvester freefalled for some distance before opening his parachute. One issue that incredibly hadn't been thought of was while the parachute halted Sylvester's fall, it didn't halt the freefalling skis. Thankfully the skis narrowly missed Sylvester and his parachute, falling harmlessly into the mountain below. When one watches the scene with an eagle eye, it's evident just how close the stunt was to becoming an absolute disaster. If those skis had hit Sylvester's parachute, it would have been game over. Number 8. Broken Bones Goldeneye While shooting for Bond films can be a major physical challenge, for both actors and stuntmen acting as 007, supporting actors are by no means immune to this. The first example on this list comes from 1995's Goldeneye, and the actor suffering the injury was the Dark Phoenix herself, Fumka Jensen. Whilst portraying the role of femme fatale Xenia on a top, Fumka managed to break her ribs at the hands of Pierce Brosnan no less, but as Jensen tells the story she very much brought the injury upon herself. During a press junket for Hansel and Gretel, another film in which she broke ribs on set, Jensen explained that she instructed Brosnan, her GoldenEye co-star, to be quite physical with her in the fight scene in the spa. Jensen told Brosnan to pick her up and throw her about, as her character enjoyed the pain and she wanted it to look utterly realistic. She explained that Brosnan was very apprehensive with this and didn't want to go ahead with instructions, but he was finally convinced by Jensen, who believed she couldn't get hurt due to the padding on the walls. How wrong she was. After a short recovery break from the broken ribs, Jensen returned to complete the filming, an extremely impressive feat considering the physicality the role commanded. While her portrayal as Xenia Onotop has already been considered as one of the best Bond villains in history, the story of her commitment to the physicality of the role makes her performance all that more impressive. 007 Train Jump Mishap Octopussy We have a rival Bond picture occurring the same year featuring none other than Sean Connery himself. The producers of the Roger Moore starring Octopussy knew they had to up the ante. It was in the action scenes that the stakes were truly risen. With one of the most daring and jaw dropping stunts attempted in film history, four Tom Cruise's efforts in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation were impressive? Well, the stunts in the 1983 film were something else, and it was in the film's spectacular train sequence that major injuries occurred. The incident involved Martin Grace, Roger Moore's stunt double, who fractured his pelvis while hanging on the outside of a train as it moved at full speed. Like many incidents on this list, there was no fault to the person undertaking the stunt in the mishap. In this case, a failure of communication caused the incident. Grace actually managed to complete the stunt with minimal
minimal fuss, but there was an inability to communicate with him, so no one could tell him that the filming had ceased. He therefore continued the stunt, unaware that the upcoming section of the track had not been surveyed. With no idea that filming had stopped, Grace carried on the stunt before eventually colliding with a pole, breaking his pelvis. Thankfully, this stunt was the worst injury suffered during the film, which, considering the new level of risks being taken, was actually an accomplishment of sorts. Number 6. Halle Berry's Eye Injury – Die Another Day One of the major criticisms facing the final Brosnan Bond film, Die Another Day, was the replacement of realistic action scenes for low-quality CGI, with scenes containing surfing down a glacier and cars chasing invisible cars, topped off with an ending taking place in a shoddily rendered plane. There was just a real fake feel to the action scenes in this offer. With this in mind, it came to no surprise just how many injuries occurred on set when filming the non-CGI action scenes. The first injury occurred early on in filming when Pierce Brosnan twisted his knee when leaping onto a hoverboard as part of a pre-credit sequence. This, however, is nothing compared to the injury that befell Halle Berry, who suffered an eye injury in the most peculiar way. When filming an action sequence that required grenades to go boom, a gust of wind caused debris to go in Berry's eye. Though Berry was back on board for filming that day, in the end, Die Another Day's troubled production didn't affect the film's box office, although the critical reception was poor to say the least. So poor, in fact, that it spawned the idea to reboot the Bond franchise and get rid of Brosnan altogether. Number 5. Helicopter Mishap – You Only Live Twice While the bobsled stunt during the filming of For Your Eyes Only was the only stunt that resulted in a fatality on a Bond set, the horrific injury suffered by the cameraman during the filming of You Only Live Twice was still very much a tragedy. In fact, the results of this stunt indirectly led to the death of the cameraman involved, John Jordan, two years later. The incident occurred during the filming of the Little Nelly scene, in which Bond flies a small aircraft around the Japanese mountain range. While Ken Wallace flew the plane as Connery's double, Jordan was hooked up via a harness to film the scenes. During filming, his foot was sliced off by the blades of the helicopter when his harness slipped. While Jordan survived the incident, this mishap eventually led to his demise two years later. While shooting aerial shots for the film Catch-22, Jordan lost his footing as his prosthetic leg slipped and then sadly fell to his death. While this was the greatest mishap to befell the film, this proved to just be one of the many mishaps to occur on and off the seemingly cursed set. Number 4. Mega Explosion – Fundable While there are many issues related to the misfiring stunts that could be put down to bad luck, or over exuberance on behalf of the actors involved, the misfire in this case came down to the sheer incompetence on behalf of producers and stunt coordinators. As told by the crew involved in the film's production of the excellent documentary The Making of Fundable, plans for the major explosion to occur during the film's finale hit a snag, namely the lack of explosives. Approaching the contact they had in the US Army, they managed to get their hands on some rocket fuel. However, they were unaware just how powerful the fuel was, and it only arrived the night before filming. The stunt coordinators loaded it up with more explosives than was required. As the boat approached the explosives at full speed, the rocket fuel was detonated and the boat disappeared. The answer to where the boat had gone came later that day, when the true power of the rocket fuel became apparent. When the crew returned to the town some 30 miles away from where they were filming, every window in the main street had shattered. Amazingly, there were no reports of any injuries from the incident, but one must assure that this was a hefty insurance claim. Number 3. Electrocution – Goldfinger The character of Oddjob is arguably one of the greatest henchmen to grace our screens. As the Silent Beast enjoyed killing people with his steel-brimmed hat, Harold Sakata, who was a Japanese sumo wrestler, also known for playing the pantomime villain, despite speaking minimal English. Sakata's kind and gentle nature however however, proved to be his downfall, with severe burns resulting from the stunt gone wrong. The burns occurred during the iconic scenes within the walls of Fort Knox. During the final fight scene with Connery's 007, Sakata was instructed by director Guy Hamilton to grab hold of the steel brim of the hat when it became lodged between the cage bars holding the gold. As Sakata grabbed hold of the hat, a massive explosion set off, designed to show the electrocution of the character. As documented in the making of Goldfinger, the electrocution scene went awry, causing significant burns to Sakata as the electrocution actually occurred. Incredibly, the incident wouldn't have happened, or at least wouldn't have caused so much damage to Sakata. If he wasn't such a nice guy, that was. Despite feeling the pain of the electrocution running through him, Sakata refused to let go of the hat that was burning him. And the reason for this? Because the director Guy Hamilton hadn't called for the end of the take. Of course, Hamilton was staggered by Sakata's obedience. But one has to wonder just how poor the planning must have been for such a poor stunt. Number 2. Death on the Bobsled Tracks For your eyes only. While many stunts are 
in this list have proven to be near misses and then becoming great stories to tell. This misfired stunt sadly had fatal consequences. While many of the stunt mistakes were down to the producers and or crew, this tragedy was actually caused by the poorly designed bobsled track. In the biggest and best action sequence of 1981's For Your Eyes Only, James Bond is pursued by Russian assassins in a ski resort. To avoid capture, Bond skis down a bobsled track that is in use while being chased by assassins on a motorbike. While the skiing and the motorbike component of the stunt went down with no issue, tragedy struck when the bobsled flipped over during filming, killing 23-year-old stunt performer Pablo Rigoni. Sadly, this wasn't the only tragedy to occur on the track, with an accident occurring during the bobsled competition, killing a competitor at the exact same part of the track where Rigoni's death occurred. In light of these deaths, the bobsled track was modified to not have such severe turns. Thankfully, there has been no subsequent deaths on the set of a Bond film since, and one can only hope that Rigoni's death will be the last. Number 1. Shark Tank Thunderball The final entry on this list is the most misfired stunt in the Bond film franchise. Due to its fascinating, too strange to be true backstory, the simply amazing story is one that the cast and crew can look back on now and smile, but it very nearly resulted in Sean Connery's death. As told in the making of the Thunderball documentary, a scene was planned for Connery to swim through a pool filled of actual sharks. Connery, followed by the cameraman, was to open the hatch that would lead to the secondary pool, where some of the sharks would be waiting for him on the other side. The idea was that sharks would be on one side of a piece of perspex glass, with Connery and the cameraman safely on the other. Unfortunately, props team couldn't get the length of the perspex glass long enough, but this didn't stop them making an incredible decision to go ahead with it anyway. Not surprisingly, the sharks managed to easily slip under the glass, heading through the tunnels leaking both pools. When his planned Connery opened the hatch, he received a mighty shock when a shark swam right by him. The sheer terror on Connery's face makes the scene feel incredibly realistic, which it would because it actually was realistic. That wasn't the end of the drama for Connery and the cameraman, who quickly proceeded through the tunnel to get safely to the secondary pool. Connery swam as fast as he could, but he was confronted by yet another shark swimming towards him. Fortunately, there just wasn't enough room for the sharks to get by. While justifiably furious, Connery demanded answers. It may have been an experience that Connery would never forget, but did result in one of the truly most memorable scenes in the Bond franchise. And that's our list. Did you know these stunts went wrong? Or did you all just assume they went down with that hitch? Let us know down in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Anyway, until next time, I've been Ben Roy Turner and thanks for watching.